I also wanted to ask you about your relationship with Senator McConnell. I know the two of you have a long history of actually working together on various deals. Have you talked to him since the election? And given the partisan nature of, of Congress right now, how do you convince him that it's in America's best interest to work with you going forward? I don't think I have to convince him of that. He knows me. He knows I'm as straight as an arrow when I negotiate. He knows I keep commitments, and I never attempt to embarrass the opposition. Um, there's some things that I think are, uh, are just ready for the kind of compromise that Democrats and Republicans are prepared to engage in, absent the President of the United, President, President of the United States' uh, attitudes on some of these issues. Infrastructure, dealing with health issues, dealing with the fight against cancer, dealing with uh, education. I think there's a number of things. As I said before, we've got to take the vitriol out of politics. I know there's a lot of people on both sides who want to continue to go after and punish the opposition. I get that. I get the fact that an awful lot of Americans are disappointed I was elected president. Fortunately, there's seven million more that were happy than disappointed, but I get that. And there's a lot of Democrats who are angry and want to strike back at Republicans. But I've said from the beginning, and I've, I think I've conducted myself this way throughout my career, I learned that early lesson. It's always appropriate to question other man and woman's judgment, but never their motive. Once you question their motive, then, in fact, there's no way to get to go. You're in the pocket of the cement industry. Let's do a deal on highways. Oh, no possibility. And so when I've dealt with Mitch McConnell in the past as a vice president or as a senator, we haven't engaged in that activity. doesn't mean we can get to an agreement. I'm not asking anybody to abandon their principles. But I do think it makes no sense to engage in vitriol and trying to get to a place where I can't believe that a majority of the Republicans don't understand we need a new infrastructure in America. If there was nothing to do with jobs or a green economy, just too many bridges that are going to collapse, too many roads in disrepair, too many Republican states that every time it floods, they flood out their their, 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 their water systems are polluted. It's just, these are common problems. And I'm confident it's going to be hard, but I'm confident we can get to agreement on a number of things that will be of consequence. Thank you all so very, very much. Is that it? Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. No, I don't think it should be mandatory. I wouldn't demand it be mandatory, but I would do everything in my power. Just like I don't think masks have to be made mandatory nationwide. I'll do everything in my power as the President of the United States to encourage people to do the right thing, and when they do it, demonstrate that it matters. That's why I said on my, in my inaugural speech, I'm going to ask people to commit for 100 days to wear a mask. Not because I'm asking it uh, to, for any reason to punish. This is not a political issue. It's become one. But if people do it for 100 days in the middle of what will be still a raging crisis and the vaccine is able to be distributed, they're going to see deaths drop off the edge. They're going to see hundreds of thousands of people not getting sick. And my hope is they'll be then inclined to say, OK, it's worth, it's worth the patriotic duty to go ahead and protect other people. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. Are you going to Georgia? Yes. When? 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 Before Christmas? <laughs> Thank you, guys. We'll help.